Today, I want to talk about one of the most important things that you're ever going to do, the ever, ever going to learn about in writing. And I'm going to illustrate that with a personal experience from my second book that was kind of difficult for me to swallow. It was, it was a tough thing for me to do. Today, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about murder. <laughs> <coughs> murder but not not like about like in your book <laughs> and we're not literal murder either not killing off characters we're talking about a phrase that many of you may have already heard kill your darlings or murder your darlings basically an iteration of that it's a term that has lived longer than probably anyone watching this video but it boils down to essentially making difficult editing choices difficult cuts in your in your in your whole process this could be characters this could be sentences words entire chapters even really anything that you personally really love but doesn't serve the purpose of the story things that you're clinging to or holding on to, but might actually be holding your writing back. That's what murdering your darlings is all about. And we're going to talk about five different things of how it might show up in your writing. It's something that I struggle with so much because I had to essentially kill off a character that I really didn't want to kill off. A character that was just something I really struggled with. One of my favorite characters that I resisted this change to for so long that you could even say I had kind of like a tantrum about it. I mean, I guess you could kind of say I'm still having a tantrum about it right now. But we'll save that for the fifth and final reason. Let's get to some of the more common things that happen and, and how you can kill your own darlings. It's October, right? You know, and I'm actually recording this on Friday the 13th, so I think it just works out really well. The first one is going to be redundancy. Is there a point you're really trying to get across in your book? Something you may have emphasized more than once. Perhaps you really want to get across how massive the ant chamber is, or how cold the water may be, how it chills their skin and rattles their bones. This is probably the most common thing. Killing off extra descriptions or over explanations. During the writing process, it may feel essential to get the imagery across, but during the editing process, sometimes less is more. Cut out the redundancies. Find the places where you have basically said the same thing twice or three times and decide on the one that just works best, that gets the, th the whole point across. You don't need to tell someone multiple times the same exact thing. Number two is another one that I had a lot of issue with, and that's purple prose. When you're cutting out those redundancies, it's time to kill off the purple prose. You see that beautifully written purple prose that would make your high school English teacher gasp? It's probably going to make your audience groan. Purple prose was initially one of the hardest things for me to get rid of. It felt like writing was the time for me to show off my vocabulary, murdering the thesaurus across every page in order to flex my credentials. After all, if I didn't use esoteric words every couple sentences, how could I call myself an author? Like, what the fuck is that? I, I, I can't just be crude and crass in my writing, that would be crazy. I have to be very eloquent, right? Well, fuck that shit. I'm actually not. <laughs> Purple prose is the kind of text that is so flashy, so overly wrought, that it brings attention to itself instead of what you're trying to say. You don't want the words taking away from the story. It's essentially what it comes down to. If it's too pretty or too academic, just kill it. Nine times out of ten, there's a better word choice you can do that will be more appreciated by your, your audience than the things that would be appreciated by your English teacher. Number three is going to be unnecessary characters. This is... <laughs> shit, you know, like, the thing that's getting me here is, like, as I go through this list, like, every single one of them is a mistake that I make pretty regularly. And I have personal anecdotes about how much I've messed up with it, which is the same for useless characters. Useless characters is about is referring to characters that you can that aren't necessary for the story. When you may have kind of just gotten a little bit too eager 
to to fill out your world. It's not saying side characters are useless. Side characters are very important, but that maybe you have two side characters when one would do. Useless, k killing your darlings in this instance is all about, you know, kind of like shrinking it down. Like one of the one of the critiques of some of my writing has been that there's just there is a lot of characters and there's one in particular where I felt really shit after hearing about it because I had a, a beta reader who after I had uh, they'd been reading my second book, they told me like, hey, you know what? What happened to this character? It was a named character. And and as they told me that, I just kind of stared at him. Who the fuck is that? Oh, I didn't say that. That was just me internally screaming because I had no idea who the hell they were talking about. Who is this person? So I did a control F on my Word document to find this person. And I mentioned them one time in passing. And I made it seem like they were important. They weren't. They were a totally unnecessary character. And I guess I kind of did the opposite of the advice because I made them more necessary later. And that's when I realized that I had created this unnecessary named character. So what I did then was I merged them into another character, took two small side characters and put them into one side character, made a character that made more sense long term. So that, that payoff was there for the, the small character because they also had all these other things from the other character that I had written. Just merge them together. Kind of like uh, this scene from Fullmetal Alchemist. My friend. Yeah, that's right. Edward, why does it hurt here? Don't do that. Don't do that to your characters. It's that shit haunts me to this day. Speaking of even more unnecessary things, how about unnecessary scenes? This is kind of taking the last couple of things here and just putting it all together. When, when you have unnecessary characters, unnecessary words, purple prose, all this shit in a scene. Maybe that scene doesn't matter. Maybe you are being redundant with that scene. Maybe it's an entire chapter that doesn't matter. But it goes even further because as authors, we like to research a lot. We research all kinds of shit. We research the, the you know, what happens to, to wounds as they decay? What happens when you're, what, what is the life cycle of wheat? How does that play out? What is the, the clothing, the attire? How does that, how, what, what are, what are certain different parts of, of, of sewing that happen? Those kind of things that are, that, you know, they're, they're, they're very important to us building a world, but might be boring as shit and totally unnecessary for your reader. So, a doesn't necessarily scene in this point might be something where you are incorporating all of that research, but maybe it doesn't actually help the story. For example, if your character likes to race horses in their spare time and you find that fascinating, you might have you might have even researched how horse racing goes about so that you can have your character speak to it. But if your character is in the midst of fighting the Dark Lord Sauron, does he need an entire scene about how he won the, the fall prize in the horse race outside of Mount Doom. Probably not. I mean, you could try and make an argument for that, that inclusion of that scene. But at that point, it probably is more just you wanting to incorporate the thing that you found interesting or the thing that you spent a lot of time researching. You could use it in other ways on, and subtle nods and things like that. You can get creative with this extra research, with the scene that you decide that actually isn't pushing the whole thing forward, not pushing the story forward. You can make it show up in other ways, in dialogue, even small little snippets, but it doesn't have to be a big scene. Killing your darlings could simply just be cutting down a scene to just a couple words. If you're deeply attached to an entire scene and you don't necessarily want to get rid of it, perhaps consider moving it around. Find a different place for it. Find a place where it does actually move the story forward. Where does it push it? And, you know, kind of work it in that way. Get creative here with this killing your darlings. It doesn't just mean cutting everything. It could simply mean that it's not the right place or the right time. This is also where having an editor is so important with all of this. Honestly, this is an editor is very important here because we get so attached to our own writing. They're your darlings after all. 
And so an editor can be very helpful in being a bit more ruthless and saying that this sucks or telling you that you have a very strange predisposition with 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 describing lips, which is certainly not me at all. Sorry, I don't know why it's like the thing. It's like my crutch. You use it to describe everything. I'm just going to start saying the eyes darken all the time. I think that'll be my next big thing. But this last one, this last one is probably one that's a bit more uniquely mine. Um, not that I'm the only one who's done it, just that it's the one that fits the most with me. And that's, that's kind of like, we're going to call it twisting narrative. So I have to kind of like warn here that this has some kind of spoilers for my second book. It's not that like if if you read through the second book, you'll probably get an idea of what I'm talking about here as it's as it's happening. And it may give away something. Uh, so just as a, as a warning there, if you do plan on reading my books, maybe consider muting this this portion. But essentially what happened is I had a character that I loved. I thought this character was great. They they had so many things going for them that made them incredibly complex and and made them a joy to write because I could explore different parts of the human psyche with them. And they were going towards a fate <laughs> and I didn't want that fate to happen. I really really didn't want that fate to happen because it was final. It was a final thing and I just, I was not okay with it. But there was a part of me that obviously knew that I had to. So I kept writing and I was writing towards this thing, but then I just kept not doing it. I kept finding, trying to find a way, trying to twist the narrative, find a, a an exit ramp. I was trying to write in an exit ramp to avoid killing this darling. I was trying to change the entire trajectory of my story just to prevent this thing from happening, which meant that everything that had been building up to this moment, all the things that had been kind of happening organically were also being twisted and moved. And then it was making that the whole thing not work anymore. And so my beta reader pulled me aside and said, no, you have to do this. Like, you know, you have to do this. And then my wife did the same thing and said, you have to do this, which it sounds silly, right? It sounds silly to say like, you know, I was this attached to a character that I didn't want to do it, but I just freaking didn't. And it really took them, them convincing me that I was writing it in this way and that I was trying to sacrifice the entire story by twisting the narrative away from its logical next step because I didn't want to end this thing. That's kind of the whole point that I'm, I'm trying to get to is when you find yourself changing your story, changing the plot, changing the whole the whole trajectory of it, because you don't want to do one thing, one part of the story. Consider what is the most valuable thing here for the entirety of the story. And sometimes it sucks because you have to kill off things that you don't want to. You have to decide whether the sacrifices are worth it or not, or if you are sacrificing the the scope of your story. So I did my best to try and get that without making it too obvious <laughs> what I was talking about with with my own writing. But essentially, like what it comes down to, the the the, the too long didn't read is when you are fighting your own writing to keep something in, that's when you need to step back, listen to other people's advice and say what and ask them questions like, what did you see happening from here? And if they're all universally saying the same thing and you're saying this, you got to not do this because you have led your audience in this way and you're trying to force this way. If they believe the same thing and it's opposite of what you're trying to do, you probably need to kill your darlings. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you with get like a little bit more 
context and understanding of, of the terminology kill your darlings and why being a writer sucks sometimes. <laughs> have a great day. My name is Mark Moore. I really appreciate you being here and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. Now, listen, Skelly, that's Skellington. That's just rude. <laughs> Sorry. Please don't demonetize this video. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Hmm.